coming up. It, it, those roads are because of the fragile nature of <laughs> that whole landscape. It's all always moving. They're difficult to keep up with, and they're a priority for my constituents out in that area, especially um, the road to to Detroit. It's got it's got, right, some, it's it's got some bad spots in it, but they're. I've talked to Caltrans about that. Would they like to link up? What they'd like to do is give me the highway stretch, or give us the highway stretch between Fernbridge and, and Burndale. Right, and okay. We have 1,200 miles of road right now and a continuous diversion of funds back to the state. So road maintenance is a big enough issue. $135 a barrel for oil, you can imagine what it would cost to resurface, and we are doing some of that. Mm -hmm. But the 101 corridor is, um, to have that open year-round so people can have a dependable source of transportation, and those manufacturers that we have talked about have access mm -hmm. to the south and across the U.S. is probably the, one of the most important things along with improvements to the airport, which are current. The rail, they're doing, they're going to do an assessment of the rail, and those answers, including fish passage issues all up through the canyon, are going to be right in front of everybody in the near future. So those decisions on viability will be for everybody to make. It'll be, um, it'll be available. What's your position on local mass transit? Do you think that rail line should be used for local light rail? Uh, do you think instead the bus service on an improved highway system should be uh, improved at all? What's, what's your take? Uh, there, I can say that I think there are probably options to incorporate trails in with the existing rail line around the bay. And in the event that that option becomes available to use rail, there could be some kind of a compromise where the trail system could work, it could be adaptive. Done the applications the Harbor District did a number of years ago and made some money available for inter transportation around Humboldt Bay and out to the edge where it could be um, uh, a facility where offloading could take place and then transport to the south. So there are a number of alternatives that could provide for both. Just to have a have so the HTA can come down Myrtle here. Revitalize a whole older, bring a bus down the old Arcata Road and lock up to, you know, you know. I think it's ridiculous. I believe now what, maybe the city buses maybe now run out to Redwood Acres. Is that correct? I, I, if I'm not mistaken. They, I don't know how far out old Arcata Road they go, but they there is a regular service between Arcata and Eureka right. that's really highly used. So is Humboldt State. They've got a special pass program. Right. It's taking a lot of cars off the road. Enhancing that is, uh, if you look at Broadway, the times were already maxed out, and, and Myrtle's another one that's got to be incorporated into the whole assessment for what happened anywhere around Cotton or South Eureka. How can we get more public transportation? And I believe CR, did they just now just not give their own version, approve their own version finally, after years, after of, of, the, of a jack pass? I haven't seen the approval, but it's been a high-profile issue for them trying to get it so that they can do a similar program to... to I remember when I was there trying yeah. to work with it at CR, they, we essentially gained a lot, quite a bit of approval for it, then the, then the academic sort of Senate sort of stepped in and said, well, we're, we're now going to require you to have to require this it. many amount, well, this, we have to require, for this to pass, you have to get this many amount of votes in an election yeah. in order for it, and it was, the number was just something that probably CRs never had in any of their elections and such. But do you think that, the, do you think that, you know, do you, what do you think of the new president? I mean, are you pretty, you know, do you think he can bring a lot to, to CR and bring CR back to the, you know, to the productive level that, that it's been? <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I have not spent a lot of time with him, but I, I have with some of the trustees, some of the board members, and I think they're pretty well aware of what uh, Hurdles had got in front of them. 
interestingly, um, I think there's a brand new move, brand new, but there is a move to better accommodate some of the needs of those people we talked about earlier, the, the manufacturing sector jobs. There, there, there is actually quite a, uh, there's a need to respond to a certain level of employment for some of those manufacturers. And some of them struggle with trying to find people that are uh, that have the educational background to be able to step up and perform those tasks. So, what they're talking about doing right now, and I think we're going to see very soon, is adaptive educational opportunity. You tell us where this gap is, whether it's in uh, it's in auto repairs and mechanics with the newest electronic age, whether it's in the manufacturing sector of uh, the needs for wing and plate or sure. some of the... I was there, I remember one time being down and talking to the guy who runs the mission uh, center, to a guy yeah. department down there, and I asked him, you know, what do people do once they graduate from here, and he said, go to Hayward. <laughs> well, <they're, laughs> that's what's exciting about this, and, and I'm a believer in this. It happened as you know with nursing. We didn't have we didn't have the program that really expanded enough to meet our needs within this community. Which, although it's grown a little bit, it's still there's an amazing population that need help. And so both Humboldt and CR, CR's got a waiting list now for their nursing program. And they've expanded it. And I thought, well that's wonderful. You want to use local talent, you want to offer them the opportunity to move into a field where they're needed. And they're really great paying jobs. So that's happening. And what John and I talked about is there are other manufacturing sector opportunities in, in information technology where these folks would would need there is a need there. The employers identify the needs and what their educational strategy would be through the Office of Ed in coordination with the people you talked about, CR is one example. And, plus, and they build a program. And, yeah, and if we had an interest here, keeping the products here that are produced here, keeping them floating around here like a pulp and the wood, you know, the benefits from that would just exponentially yeah. could come back to CR. And to the, yeah. Now, some folks, uh, unlike us, aren't lucky enough to have homes. You mentioned the South Spit and cleaning that area out. Some of that workload has gone to the multiple assistance center, but of course they don't even serve singles anymore, only families. Uh, what is your stance on what level of service the county currently provides the homeless population, and what more do you think uh, needs to be done and, and you think can be accomplished in your next term? Well, I started work uh, on the homeless population about, I want to say, two years ago in coordination with the other agencies with Social Security Administration and also with Health and Human Services. There's kind of a need to identify flows. And you may recall that that uh, suddenly we found San Francisco busing people up from their jurisdiction. Truthfully, caught them putting people on a bus. We called it Greyhound Therapy and it was because of a board break or whatever the reason was, I fired off a letter to the Board of Supervisors in San Francisco, which uh, prompted immediate responses from some of their board members. Although I would say some of it was politically motivated because there were always differences of opinion on that board in the mayor's office. But uh, in fact, we were able to stop that. 